A warm welcome to the weekend edition of your Bangladesh City News Update. For Friday, April 1. The right 1. of prison officers to join trade unions in Barbados has been restored following a landmark High Court ruling that erased legislative amendments made 40 years ago. The Honorable Justice Cecil McCarthy, in a written judgment released today, struck down as unconstitutional sections 23 and 24 of the Prison Amendment Act of 1982. He found that the substantial intent of the Amendment Act was to significantly restrict prison officers' freedom of association enshrined in Section 21.1 of the Constitution. The controversial legislation enacted under the former Tom Adams administration made it unlawful for prison officers to join, associate with, or benefit financially from trade unions. Consultant to the Prison Officers Association, Caswell Franklin, has welcomed the ruling. The Rock Hall Freedom Village is well on the way to becoming a multifunctional cultural and heritage site. Work is ongoing at the park that opened in August last year. A new amphitheater, performance stage and other fixtures have been added on the phase two of the project. Minister with Responsibility for Culture, Senator Dr. Chantal Munro-Knight and other officials visited the St. Thomas location today and she noted the space will be fully developed for the arts and tourism opportunities. One of the distinct things about the Rock Hall Freedom Park project um, has been the involvement of the Rock Hall community. And I think that is critical because I've been continuing to say that for us, the Rock Hall um, Freedom Village is really going to be an exemplar for how we do community tourism. And that very much there has been an investment in making sure that we continually bring the Rock Hall community along with us. All of the shops that we would have seen on the sites, we've made sure um, that those belong to um, the people from within St. Thomas. The artisans that have worked here have come from within St. Thomas and from within the community. We are going to be as responsive as we can um, to the community as well. We talked about the build out of a play park and that is again being responsive to the community. Um, the rural tennis is being responsive and they've also asked us to build a basketball court as well. And going forward, um, we are intended to make sure that we listen as well to the community. So yes, multifunctional, yes, national, but also very much grounded within the community. Tourism Minister Senator Lisa Cummins was also on this morning's tour and she said the site is an important addition to her ministry's product development accelerator program. This is a perfect example of one example of how we can treat to community tourism village developing all across the country. Here we have obviously the entertainment, the culture, the heritage, but we're also looking to bring in the retail. We're looking to make sure that there's product development. You will hear more from us in the coming weeks about our tourism product development accelerator program, which is going to be coming along to ensure that small businesses from our communities, artisans and all kinds of partners at the community level have an opportunity to develop product for the purpose of selling it on a retail basis into the tourism industry, but also on an export basis into our major source markets through our tourism promotion offices overseas. In other news this Friday, family, friends and dignitaries paid glowing tributes to Dr. Yu Seeley at an emotional funeral service today. The respected environmentalist, who was the government's special envoy for climate change, was remembered as a giant of a man, a doting father, a loving brother, and the consummate professional. His daughter Jasmine Seeley praised her father for his unconditional love, who not only saw her and her brother as his children, but as his friends, his equals, and more. Dad, I love you so much, and I like you even more. You are a giant to us all, and it feels impossible that the world carries on spinning in your absence. The loss of you is simply unfathomable. But the thing about big souls like yours, Dad, is they aren't so easily erased. And though you are gone, I see you everywhere. I can still picture you so clearly leaning against the railing on the balcony at Whitehall, watching the sunset behind the cruise ships in the distance. You are lost in thought, that big brain of yours churning, churning, churning like a strong current. I can hear your mischievous laugh, your booming voice. You turn to me with a grin and you say, I love you, Jazzy B. I like you a little bit too. You're going to be okay. His sister, Alison Silly Smith, who is struggling to come to terms with his untimely passing, spoke proudly of her brother.
So he was all the things we have heard in the many tributes and accolades. He was one of Maya Angelou's great souls. He was a champion, he was a visionary, he was a born leader, a hero, a loud and passionate giant in his field. He also made a serious papa pot. Never met a pork chop he didn't like and could salsa like a boss. He was a good friend and our foolish brother. And his loss leaves a hole that time will never fill. He was my very first friend, and I will miss him terribly for the rest of my life. Prime Minister Mia Motley said Seely, a true friend from childhood, was an outstanding man. She pointed out that not only did he lead the country's efforts against climate change, but was at the center of the addressing the island's water woes. My phone will forever have what could easily be published as a book with the lessons and tutor to tutelage that Hugh gave me on issues of climate and on issues of water. And anything that we have achieved as a government in this area, whether it was in Glasgow last year with Marsha and Liz, whether it was in the areas of being able to finally deliver water to the people of St. John and St. Joseph, Hugh Seeley was at the center of those decisions. Whether it was in the recognition that this country should not spend $600 million on a West Coast sewage project, but that we should seek to do a series of deep injection wells and have an element of reverse osmosis, it was Hugh at the center of trying to find a better solution for the country and not just go with what others believed is the easy path to getting it done. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, Jamaica's Labour Minister Carl Samuda is concerned that the island's tourism workers are being lured to greener pastures overseas and he's calling for more people to be trained to work in the sector. Mr. Samuda said tourism workers are being recruited by foreigners, which is crippling the sector. The COVID-19 pandemic also contributed to the shortage in the industry. Therefore, Mr. Samuda said more workers are needed. As soon as we train them on the hotel and the, the tourists come and see them in the hotels, they go away and tell them friend and next thing you know them friend send recruiters to recruit our workers. If we allow that to happen, then we'll eventually end up, the thing that makes us so wonderful in the world and leaders is the quality of workers that attend to tourists. And if therefore we, it behoves, up, behoves us to train more. So if they want, so if Jamaica can be considered a destination for hotel workers, then so be it. But we must train enough. Mr. Samuda also warned, wants members of parliament and counselors to recommend eligible persons for the overseas employment program. On the international front, Israeli forces shot dead a Palestinian today during clashes in the Flashpoint occupied West Bank city of Hebron, the latest in a surge of violence. The clashes come amid heightened tensions ahead of the start of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan and as days of deadly violence in Israel and the occupied West Bank raise fears of an escalation. Week, 11 Israelis dead. I think it's the deadliest spate of violence we've seen for years. Um, after that, following that yesterday, a Palestinian who was on an Israeli bus near Jewish settlements in the West Bank pulled out a screwdriver and attacked a passenger. Another passenger who was armed shot him dead. His victim is now in hospital. Uh, Israel has responded with arrests in the West Bank 
And during those arrests, which Israel says was of suspects related to the gunman in the in the last, the final attack of the three, that's when we've seen the Palestinian deaths, two in Janine in the north of the West Bank yesterday, one in Hebron today. So what are we looking at? Uh, it is not yet reminiscent of the second intifada, I'd say. Doesn't mean it won't turn into that, but then the Palestinian militant groups were in control. They were funding, they were training, they were providing material for suicide attackers. This time they're welcoming it. We've heard um, praise from Hamas and Islamic Jihad, but they're not in control. We're seeing lone wolves, we're seeing small cells. Uh, it's more reminiscent, I think, of the knife, what became known as the, the knife attacks, the knife intifada of 2016. But then they were armed with knives or perhaps vehicles, cars. This time they're armed with, uh, with guns, with automatic weapons. It's more dangerous. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.